Hello, everyone. Thanks for registering for this enablement session from SAP Partner Service Delivery. The session topic for today is getting started with social media and will be presented today by Richard Duffy. Please note that the session is being recorded. In the Recorded Connect session, your name may be visible to others who are viewing the recording. If anyone has any objections to this, please disconnect at this time. We will have a formal Q&A session at the end of this presentation. Uh, so please hold all questions until the end, uh, if you may. If you, would, if you wish, you could chat in your questions in the uh, chat field on the left-hand side of your screen as we go. If you experience any problems with the audio during this conference, please press star zero for operator assistance. I will now hand it over to Richard Duffy to commence our session for today. Richard. Great. Thank you very much, Jeff. And uh, again, on behalf of everybody at SAP, I'd like to thank you for taking time to join us for today's session. So as you know, the session title is uh, Getting Started with Social Media. Uh, and it's really, you, I, I like to subtitle this session, Creating Your Social Media System. Social media is really, for many organizations, part of what they, what they classify as their marketing activities. Although social media can be used for many different things. But when I think about marketing, I like to think about marketing as a system. Uh, for many businesses, the people who are driving the marketing process in their organization aren't necessarily people whose traditional background is marketing. So the best way of delivering uh, effective uh, marketing inside an organization is to really try and build a systematic approach to what you do, and social media is no different. So we're going to talk today about putting into place a social media system in your organization and what are the different components of that. Now speaking of components, one of the things that you'll notice down the bottom of the, uh, this first slide is I have a little, and I, if I move my um, cursor off it, you'll see it'll start moving in because of the PowerPoint, uh, because of the SAP Connect system, it's a little bit scrambled. But what you'll see happening there is across in the left-hand side, you'll actually see um, uh, a Twitter hashtag, SAPB1. This is a little tool that's available from SAP. Uh, it's part of our PowerPoint um, Twitter tools. So. As we go through today's presentation today, I'll be using these Twitter tools. What does it allow you to do? Well, basically, this is a ticker, and what it does is anything that's being uh, sent out through Twitter at the moment using this hashtag of SAPB1, it automatically comes in in real time to this feed. So one of the great things about social media is there are lots of tools out there that can help you uh, be effective in your usage of social media. This is just one of them. And if you'd like a copy of any of the tools that we're talking about in today's session, all you need to do is reach out to me. I'll give you my email address right now and then again at the end. It's richard.duffy at sap.com. I'll be more than happy to share um, this tool or links to any of the other tools with you. So uh, as I go through today's presentation as well, embedded in the slide deck, there's actually um, more social media functionality. So when I'm talking about certain topics, it's going to automatically in the background send out tweets for me. So you can automate your social media participation as well if you like. So let's then talk about um, you know, creating your social media system. And I've left the word small business in here because a lot of people, uh, when they think about some of these tools, and particularly when you see what SAP is doing, you know, people think that, well, you know, is social media uh, the kind of thing that I need to be a large business to, to really um, get it right? And the short answer is no. One of the things that I've found is that in many instances, it doesn't really matter what size business you are. What determines how successful you are is your, um, is your passion for your business, your passion for your customers, and also um, your understanding of really how social media fits into your overall marketing mix. But one thing is very, very clear, is social media is here to stay. 
Uh, it's not just today's buzzword. It's not just a, a flash in the pan. Thousands upon thousands of organizations are already participating in social media. And as they go out looking for new solutions to help them run their businesses more effectively, they're using social media to help them do their research. Now, one of the people that, that I've had quite a long association with is a gentleman by the name of John Jantz from Duct Tape Marketing. And he makes this point that if you're not participating in social media, you're really not online. You really don't have a complete digital marketing strategy. Your activity, uh, your utilization of the internet really is not complete. And that's really borne out by a lot of the research that is happening today and what we're seeing customers doing. In fact, it's not um, uh, unfair to say that almost 25 to 30% of the entire time that your customers will spend in a purchasing cycle for a new uh, business management system, business intelligence software, whatever, they will spend the first 25% of that time doing their research online before they even pick up the phone and talk to a vendor. So if you're not participating out there and getting your message out through your website, through things like Twitter, through videos on YouTube and so on, you're really missing out on the opportunity to engage early with customers. So hopefully I've made the point uh, very clear that this is something which needs to be a key part of your marketing mix. So what is social media fundamentally? Well, some of you who've heard me present before will have heard me talk about my definition of marketing. And the definition of marketing that I like to use is that marketing is getting people with a need for your product or service to know, like, and trust you. So social media is really about using technology to co-create that know, like, and trust. Now, if that's the first time you've ever heard me use that, that expression, let me just uh, drill down just a little bit for you. So fundamentally, what we're talking about here is we're talking about the different components of what we do from a marketing perspective. Everything that we do in marketing can be broken down into these three different areas, know, like, and trust. For example, what we call demand generation or branding is really uh, getting people to know you so that they know you're out there, they know you potentially have a solution, you know, they, they start to know a little bit about your organization. But in order for them to really start to build a relationship with you, they have to, to like you, and really in order for them to buy from you, they have to trust you. So there are different things we do from a marketing perspective to build that relationship and to establish that trust. So social media is really, A, it can help people find you, but it's really about giving them information and putting the content in front of them to help them begin to like you and trust you. Now, they'll like you when you start showing that you can help their business uh, and when you can help their business without expecting something in return. So social media can really help with that. I don't know if many of you are using social media today, but the amazing thing that I find about it is there are, is so much free content and information out there that helps you learn about different topics. Uh, it is phenomenal. And even the most esoteric topics, I guarantee you there's somebody out there writing a blog or posting tweets about that topic. And every day I find that I learn something new that I didn't know before. So uh, it, it, is, it is a phenomenal tool, a phenomenal technology to really help um, spread that knowledge out. And, uh, and, and again, thinking about social media, uh, utilizing case studies, utilizing customer testimonial videos on YouTube, all that kind of thing, that's going to help, again, build that, 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 that trust that will make those organizations out there that you would like to have as customers will make them want to become customers of yours. So really, that's what social media is all about, using these tools and technology to make sure we're, we're 
co-creating that know, like, and trust. So when you think about your social media system and you're sitting there saying, okay, Richard, what do I need to do to really start getting actively engaged in social media? Or what do I need to do to take my social media activities to the next level? Well, there's really five things that I believe that you need to have in place in order for this to work. The first of those things is, fundamentally, you need to create a social media strategy. Second thing you need, I'm gonna go through some of these in a, in a little bit more detail, so um, I'm just gonna touch on them right now. Second thing you need to do is you need to make sure you've optimized all of your brand assets, all the things that you have that get your message out there into the market. You also need to start thinking about creating content because content can help you with lead generation. When I'm talking about content, I'm talking about video, blogs, white papers, even simple things like um, you know the, the pages on your website. You then also need to think about, okay, how am I gonna engage in social networking? What is my objective? And what are the social networks that I'm gonna participate in? And very, very importantly, sitting over the top of all this, how am I gonna manage this beast that is my social media system? How am I gonna make sure that I get the most out of it in the minimum amount of time without it sucking up huge amounts of time. And it is very, very easy for uh, participation in social media to chew up a whole amount of your time if you don't have the discipline around it, but I'm gonna share that with you. So the first thing, the first pillar, really about building a social media strategy. I've said this before, uh, strategy before tactics. Tactics without strategy, as Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War said, uh, tactics before strategy is the noise before defeat. So fundamentally, with anything that you do, you really need to start out, as Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. So you really need to think about what are your objectives for social media? What do you wanna do? So then once you know what it is that you wanna achieve from your social media activity, then you can start um, executing on your activities and you'll be executing activities that are aligned with those objectives. And a great way of doing this is to create a listening station. Now, some of you may have read some of my blog posts on richardduffy.com or even on the channel partner portal in the Business of Business One session uh, section. Uh, and I'm also now writing a regular column on the channel partner portal called 10 Minutes to Market. And I'll be touching on a lot more of these topics in those various columns and blog posts. But I wrote one recently about creating a listening station. So what is a listening station? Fundamentally, if you think about social media, it's kind of like a giant room. Uh, imagine you walk into a, a, a big room full of people all standing around in groups and they're all talking about different things. Now, unless you're an A-type personality who just launches themselves into any conversation, one of the first things you probably do is you'd walk around a little bit, particularly if you didn't know anybody there. You might walk around a little bit listening to some of the conversations, trying to find one that you can engage in, add some value to, uh, you know, and, and really um, find a conversation that you want to be part of. So creating a listening station is kind of like that. It's about creating, using technology to really listen to all the conversations that are going on. And you can create alerts that will do that listening for you and feed that information into you. So what are the kinds of things that you listen for? Well, you listen for people talking about their experiences, maybe with you, maybe with the product that you sell, maybe with your competitors. You're listening for when people are starting to talk about your particular brand. You know, maybe they, they might do a, a, a post, a, a Twitter um, posting saying, you know, um, looking for a, a, a business object partner in Cupertino. Uh, does anybody know somebody good? So, you know, if you're selling business objects products and you're in that area, that would be a great thing to hear because then you can engage with that person when they're out there looking. So, you know, those brand mentions, listening to what the competition are doing. If the competition are using social media and they're launching, you know, promotions or talking about new product releases or that kind of thing, great way of hearing what they're doing. 
checking for the accuracy of information that's being put out there about your product or service. Another one, media stalking. What's this? Well, we had a great example here in Australia where one of the telecommunication, uh, the mobile companies had a really big service quality problem and a, one of their customers was so angry about it that he set up a dedicated website, uh, YouTube channel, Facebook page talking about how bad his experience with this company had been. Uh, and it ended up with hundreds of thousands of people subscribing to that and engaging in that discussion. So that's what I call media stalking. So listening out for when that kind of thing happens in the market is, uh, is a great reason for having a listening station. And also um, content. What do I mean there? Well, fundamentally, when you're thinking about writing content and creating content, you want to create content that people will consume, that people will read. So the best way of knowing what they're going to read is actually listening to, to see what people are consuming right now. So a listening station can help you do that. There's a number of different things you can use to create a listening station. I like to use free tools because um, you know, at the end of the day, there are paid tools that you can use for this, and I'll talk about those in a second, but fundamentally, most things with social media, you can do for free, uh, or you can use um, tools that are delivered in a freemium model. What's that? Well, it's free to use, but then you can buy a premium service where you subscribe to it or you pay them a little bit of extra money. But all these tools here are actually free. You can set up Google Alerts, which will monitor just about any kind of information that's being shared out there on the internet for certain keywords. And then you can have those, um, when it finds those instances, you can have that fed to you via email, or I actually like to use Google Reader. So all of my Google alerts on the things that I'm listening for get fed through to Google Reader. I can go and I can open that up on my, on my iGoogle portal and read all of those things and then choose which of those discussions I want to participate in, how do I want to respond, so on and so forth. Another great thing is on Twitter, um, you can go to search.twitter.com and there is incredible power in your ability to search the Twitterverse to see who is talking about what. You could even get to the point in sticking with our business objects in uh, Cupertino example. You could say, I want to search for anybody within a 50 mile radius of Cupertino who is um, mentioning uh, business objects or BI 4.0, which we've just released. Uh, in a Twitter feed and see what they're talking about and decide whether or not I want to uh, communicate with them. So you can get that specific because most of these social media tools now also have geolocation. It tags the content with the location where it was written or created. So those are the three main tools there. But as I said, you can also use paid tools to build your listening station. SAP, we use a tool called Radian 6. These are, can be some fairly expensive tools uh, and large, larger corporations tend to use these tools for really managing their online reputation for listening to what people are saying. Give you an example, we use Radian 6. Now when we released the SAP Business One um, mobile application for iPhone, what Radian 6 told us was that out of all of the SAP products that were being discussed in the month when we released that solution, the SAP Business One mobile solution was the most talked about solution on the internet throughout the world. So you can get some really good information there about understanding what people are interested in, what are hot topics. But again, you don't need to go with these paid options. Uh, free is available. Free is good. I really like it. Uh, and you can get started at very, very low cost. So the second pillar I talked about is optimizing your brand assets. So what do I mean? Well, you've got to make sure that in this digital world that your brand is being looked after and that you are really um, cultivating and creating your brand right down to the point where you, know, you might want to start doing things like you know, choosing uh, a particular person or a particular digital image to represent your brand thinking about the colors that you use in your branding, those things start to become very, very important and you should look at those things right up front. 
Also, look at all of your potential digital assets that you've got, blog posts, photos, web pages, customer case studies. Make sure your brand is consistent throughout those and make sure they're ready in a format that you can start utilizing with digital, with, uh, digital marketing and social media and we'll talk a bit more about that. Second and most important thing that I would like you to make sure you do straight after this call if you haven't already done it is you need to get out there and claim your digital real estate. What do I mean by that? On Facebook now, if you have a business page and you have more than 25 um, people who, who have liked your business page, you can go and grab the URL facebook.com slash your business name. So for example, on my uh, Facebook page dedicated to SAP Business One, I was able to go out and grab SAP Business One, which is okay for me to do because I'm an SAP employee. Um, but uh, so now facebook.com slash SAP Business One points to my Facebook page dedicated to SAP Business One. So you need to go out there and grab that. On YouTube, for example, um, I was a little bit late uh, getting out there on YouTube and when I tried to grab Richard Duffy or SAP Business One, couldn't get either of those. So uh, somebody had already grabbed SAP Business One, somebody had already grabbed Richard Duffy. So you know, I had to, to grab youtube.com slash Duffy Richard. So, you know, the sooner you get out there and grab those things, the better, because that is traditionally what people will be looking for uh, when they go out and they start searching for information about you. The same thing uh, on LinkedIn, uh, you know, Google Places, get out there and get your, um, your basic profiles created and functional, and we'll talk a bit more about that. With optimizing your brand assets, you know, think about everything you do, your images, your audio, your video, social profiles that you have out there, like I said, on LinkedIn, things in local search, tools like Google Places. Do you have an entry in Google Places that's up to date? If you've got a really good, strong Google Places um, entry that has all the right information about your organization and your products and services, you'll be amazed at how much business that can potentially generate for you because it is the new yellow pages. This whole social, um, social search is the yellow pages of today. If I put a copy of the yellow pages down in front of my teenage kids and ask them to find a business, they've got no idea how to use it. But if they're looking for a business, first thing they do, they go to the web or they pull out their iPhone and they do a search on Google. That's the basic way that it's working now, so you need to make sure you're out there. Online PR. Uh, in the US in particular, there are many services that um, give you the ability when you create press releases to submit them to these online tools and they will then get those press releases out there into the newswire. So you know you need to start looking at those kinds of tools. Do you have a presence on those tools? Are you starting to cultivate relationships with um, you know, with journalists and people in your area. And I'm going to do a whole dedicated session on that, write some blog posts later in the year talking about this concept of online PR. So keep your eyes open for that. But don't, uh, don't underestimate how important that is. Nowadays, you don't need a PR agency um, on retainer for you to help you start to get your message out. There are some very specific things you can do to do that. Um, and, uh, and we'll talk about that later in the year. So let's talk about your social network profiles. And you know what I've done is I've just grabbed screenshots of all of the profiles and things that I've put together. So if you want to look at any examples of any of the things I'm talking about, please feel free to go out and look at the, 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 the sites and the profiles that I've set up out there. Um, for Richard Duffy, you'll, you usually find me, if you do a search for SAP Business One, you'll find something that I've put out there, blog posts, the website, um, YouTube videos, whatever. But here's an example of what I've done on LinkedIn. So by going out there and grabbing those social network profiles, you can really make sure that when people are looking to check on you, it's kind of like almost, it's like online reference checking. Even when you as a salesperson go out and engage with a customer. I guarantee you there will be a percentage of them that will go out and try and find out information about you on LinkedIn, searching for you on Google, whatever the case may be. Make their life easy. Put the information up there that you want them to find that's going to help them 
begin to know, like, and trust you. So with LinkedIn, for example, not only can you put your profile information there about, you know, who you are, what you do, what your experience is, but you can also start to pull in content from other areas, so content from your YouTube channel. So you can see here on my LinkedIn profile, I've actually got, um, you know, content coming in, demonstration videos, uh, and, and other video content coming into my LinkedIn profile. So you need to go out there and start getting established in those, uh, in those tools. And LinkedIn is a, a fantastic tool as well. Again, I know we've got partners on this presentation who carry multiple SAP products. So you know, this isn't a product specific session, but just to talk about SAP Business One for a second, you know, I've gone out on LinkedIn as well and I've created a whole group, range of LinkedIn groups for the SAP Business One community. So you know, go out there and start participating in, in those communities and, and you'll find when people go looking for you, they will start thinking about you uh, in a whole different way as you put uh, this information up there. Touching on local search profiles, again, the biggest one that I would encourage you to make sure you've got a good presence on, and again, guess what? It's free, uh, is Google Places. Make sure your organization has got a really good, strong, branded entry on Google Places. Because once you're there, when anybody does a search, okay, you can be pretty sure that the Google Places content, just like YouTube content, is going to rank very, very highly in that search result without you having to pay anything because it's a Google service. So here's an example of a partner that I've worked with in Australia called Leverage Technologies, and I'm going to show you some of their other stuff later. But you can see this is their Google Places page. Now this was the very first starting entry, but it's got their information. It's got um, you know uh, their location, phone number, what they do. They're award-winning SAP and Sage business partner, and they're an SAP Business One Gold partner. Um, and then. Other things that are related to that organization are automatically pulled in here by Google. So a link to their home page and even a complimentary solution that they sell from Enprise. The link on Enprise's web page about them is up here as well. So incredibly powerful. Then you can start doing special offers. You can start doing coupons. Um, you know, if that's appropriate for your marketing uh, mix, you can start putting special offers up there. You know, tell us that you found us on Google Places and you know, we'll uh, give you two hours free consulting time or whatever. It's only limited by your imagination. So get out there and start grabbing some of those things. And then more appropriate in, um, in some of the markets that have been active in the web for a lot longer, there are so many different social search engines out there now which give consumers the ability to engage with the companies that they do business with and also other businesses. So sites like Yelp that uh, I would encourage you, if you've got customers who are raving fans for your products or services, um, get out there, establish a presence for yourself on a site like Yelp and depending on what country you're in, there will be local equivalents to this. And then get your customers to start posting comments about you on, uh, on those social search uh, e engines and on your social search profile because then when other customers go looking for you, what are they going to see? They're going to find you, they're going to see what you do, and they're going to begin to trust you. Why? Because they'll see those comments from your other customers who've had a good experience with you. So those things are really, really cool. So most of those are freemium as well. You can start off free, but then if you really want to leverage it, uh, and start to get more benefit from it, then you start to pay a subscription fee. But things like Yelp, Foursquare, you know, if you are in a large city where there are a number of different providers that people can search for, set yourself up on Foursquare, which is a, a tool that people use. They open up their mobile device, it detects where they are, they put in what they're looking for, and it'll show them all the businesses around them that offer that product or service with comments from, uh, from other people who've used that business or product or service. Um, so again, I'd encourage you, Foursquare, F-O-U-R-S-Q-U-A-R-E, foursquare.com, go and have a look at it. Uh, it's a fantastic tool for getting and building relationships with people in your local area. Another thing that you can do, particularly if you're sitting there on this call and you're, you're involved in sales, 
um, is make sure that you've built yourself a Google personal profile. Now, today's session, I'm talking about some of the things that you need to do. Now, the how to do it, I'm going to uh, extend an offer to you at the end of this session to, to, to invite you to some special training, which is going to walk you step by step through not only the what to do that we've covered today, but also the how to do it. So we're going to take you step by step through doing all of these things. But anyway, creating a Google personal profile. So it pulls in all this information. Again, why? Because you want to start building that relationship with people and making it easy for people to start to engage with you. So then asset optimization. This is the, the third pillar that we talked about. Fundamentally, at the center of your entire digital marketing effort should be your corporate website. So for example, um, if you are out there and you're telling people that one of your core strengths and the reason why they should deal with you is because of attention to detail, um, skills, knowledge, and understanding, make sure those traits are represented by your corporate website because that's the first place they're going to look at. So if you say, well, we're big on attention to detail, we're big on quality of service, and they go out and they look at your corporate website and there's spelling mistakes and it's a, a jumble of information, it's going to send out a completely different message to what you're trying to deliver in the sales cycle. So you need to make sure that that is the center point of your entire digital presence. And then all these other things that you do in social media, whether it's setting up your social profiles, doing blogs, posting videos on YouTube, doing podcasts, engaging in online PR, all of those things will need to point back to your corporate website. So you need to make sure that first and foremost that that is up to date uh, and is an accurate and a, and a good representation of your organization. So looking at all of those different um, pieces of content is really, really critical, making sure that it's consistent right throughout everything you do. So speaking of content, the biggest reason why people's social media initiatives or efforts fail is because of a lack of content. Um, they run out of things to say. So it's never been a problem that I think many of you who know me I've ever had. I never run out of things to say. But um, you know, you've got to start thinking about having a content strategy. And a content strategy will, will guide you in terms of what you need to develop and when. So why do you need to have a content strategy? Why is content important and how does it act as a lead generation engine for you? Well, I think the holy grail for most businesses nowadays is to be found versus spending your time going out trying to find people who are looking for your product or service. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be much better if when they were looking for your product or service, and they were doing that search that I was talking about, that first 25% of their uh, research or their purchasing cycle, wouldn't it be better if they found you? Well, the best way of being found is to make sure you've got really good content that's talking about what they're looking for uh, and have that up on the web and being easily found. Now, the best way of doing that, the easiest way to make a start with that is blogging and we'll talk about that in a second. So, you know, content is going to help you to be found. Um, also, when you look at your content, what it's going to do is it's going to help you optimize your online presence. All of your content um, will be uh, optimized so that it puts out the right information about your organization. It's tagged with all the right information that you know your customers are searching for. Many of you, for example, have probably used um, Google AdWords. Go out and do a Google AdWords search. See what people are looking for when they search for your kind of company. Or better still, go to your existing customers and ask them, if you were looking for a company like ours, what would you type into Google? Get that information and make sure when you're doing your search engine optimization, when you're writing your blog posts, that you incorporate somewhere in there those kinds of keywords. Now, you just put up together a blog post full of keywords because the search engines are smart nowadays. They'll know when you're doing something like that, and it's very easy nowadays to have your sites blacklisted because you're trying to cheat the search engine. So be careful with that, but make sure you're optimizing all of your online presence, all of your online engagement. And merge your content with engagement. Make sure all of your content has the ability for your customers or potential customers to know how they can reach out and talk to you. Post comments on your blog post. 
Facebook comments on your YouTube videos. Make sure you put the details about how you can be contacted with every piece of content that you put out there. But importantly, for every five pieces of content that you put out there, at least two pieces or 40% of that content should not have a sales message or a call to action. Um, that is sales related. You can take out have a call to action, you know, I, give me a, co a comment on this or whatever the case may be. But if all of your content, and I've seen some uh, organizations do this, if all of your content is thinly veiled sales pitches, people will stop following you and they'll stop consuming your content. So an important thing to bear in mind. So merging that content with engagement, making it easy for people to reach out and find you, very, very important. So I talked about blogging as being a great way to make a start. Well, why is that? Well, you've probably already got everything that you need sitting inside your organization to help you start blogging successfully. And in terms of the technology behind blogging, you can get engaged with this technology really, really quickly and really easily. You can just go out, for example, and set up your own blog on WordPress.com, all right? and start writing your blogs. But my recommendation is talk to your web designer or your web developer and see if you can, if you haven't already done it, get the WordPress blogging plugin and plug it into your existing content management system. Now, I'm working with a number of partners today and we're rebuilding their entire websites using WordPress because not only is it a blogging engine, you can also use it as a really great, easy to use, uh, content management system for building an entire word, uh, a website on. But anyway, you can go out, plug in that um, WordPress uh, blogging engine. You can then go out and get what's called a theme, which is a design or a, um, a collection of tools that present all the information in a certain format. I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, WordPress, for example, and some of these themes automatically have the ability for you to post your, your blogs and for people to come in and post comments on your blogs. They also have the ability to create an RSS feed so that people who are interested in your content can subscribe to your content and all they have to do is go ahead and click on that RSS link and your content will automatically be sent out to them when you make those changes, when you write new content. So again, if you're thinking about blogging, go and take a look at WordPress. So what are some of the best practices if you're going to get started with blogging? So first thing you need to do is you need to read, follow, and listen. So read other people's blogs, people who are talking about you know, the things that you are interested in, the things, uh, you know, if you're in a particular industry. I mean, it used to be when I started selling 25 years ago, um, you know, we would talk about... Uh, you know, how did you find people uh, or how did you find prospective customers in certain industries? Well, you went to industry conferences, you read industry magazines, you advertised in industry magazines. And no matter how esoteric the industry, you could always find a conference dedicated to it or a publication dedicated to it. Blogs are no different. You would be amazed at the, the fact that there are thousands and thousands of blogs out there talking about all kinds of different topics. So if that's your target market, go out there, use Google Alerts, Google Reader to find those blogs, start reading them, see what people in that industry are starting to talk about, then start to participate. So again, I talked about this thing using Google AdWords, write about what people are searching for. So make sure you do, you take your Google AdWord research and utilize it in other areas, not just in your pay-per-click advertising if you're doing it, uh, and build your content around what people are searching for. Because Google loves blog content. If you are blogging on a regular basis, you will find your organic search results, that is your ranking in a search page that you're not paying for. The more you blog, the more often you blog, uh, and the more people consume your blogs, the higher up you will rank. Feed the spiders often, that's, uh, you know, we talk about these, the spiders, what are they? Well, that's the web engines that run around and crawl through the web looking for content to index. Now, 
If you get WordPress, for example, and buy one of the WordPress themes and plug it into your WordPress site, there are tools automatically built into WordPress that every time you post a new blog or you update a page, what will happen is that plugin will capture that information in the format that Google wants to get it and it will automatically send that to Google. So rather than you having to wait and hope that Google comes and indexes your page, you go and submit your content straight to Google. And assuming that it's valid, good content, you will start to get indexed almost immediately. So that's another reason why utilizing something like WordPress with the plugins is great. Again, engage your comment community. If somebody comments on a post, get back in touch with them. Have a conversation with them. And the final point here, amplify your message. What do I mean by amplify? Go out and take a look at my Facebook page um, at facebook.com slash sapbusiness1. Then go and look at my blog at richardduffy.com slash blog. I use an automatic tool that every time I post a blog on my blog, I have a little plugin app for Facebook called Network Blogs and it automatically takes my blog and posts it onto Facebook. Now you might think, well, why put the same content in two different places? Well, because different people are going to engage with you through these different things. Some people are going to engage with you through Facebook. Some people are going to engage with you through your web page. But here's the thing. Once they like you on Facebook, once they friend you on Facebook, all of that content, they're probably not going to come to your page too many times after the initial time. But all of your content that you update through to Facebook is automatically going to appear on their Facebook page, on their Facebook stream. So again, your message is going to be constantly put back in front of those people who have put their hand up and said they're interested in what you have to say. So amplifying your message is really important. That's about utilizing all these different tools. So other examples of that, create a weekly digest email utilizing um, tools like paper.li, which allow you to create your own newspaper and publish your own newspaper based on the content that you've created and other content that you are following that might be relevant to people who are following you. Set up on your blog the ability for people to subscribe to your blog via email. Make sure all of your blogs and your other social media properties are listed on your social media profiles. Start to build a strategic network and in integrate them into your social media activity. What do I mean by strategic network? We call them influencers maybe, referrers, you know, people that, that are out there referring business to you or who have complementary products to what you do. Start engaging with them and start trying to build a community of interest um, where what you do uh, and what they do is aligned in terms of whether or not it would be of interest to your shared customer base and start to exchange content with them. Get them to do a guest post. If you have a, a CPA, uh, an accountant that you're working with, get them to do a guest post blog. Maybe you do a guest um, blog post for them. Uh, all kinds of different things and different ways of thinking about this you can, you can really utilize to integrate and amplify. And of course, as I've already said, Make sure that your content, you're publishing it to all these different places because you'll be amazed at the number of different ways that people will want to engage with you and find your content. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So um, back where we were before, this is an example, as I said, from Chris Brogan, and uh, he's a, a community and social media expert. So here's a blog page that he's done using WordPress. Now, you can see examples on the right-hand side of the page there where he's using some of these plugins that automatically um, feed that information out to um, you know onto his uh, onto his blog page onto his website. Now he's using a theme called Thesis, but if you go out and you look at my website as well, you'll see the the plugins that do all the content indexing, that do the archiving, the subscription engines, all of those things are automatically available as plugins. So what does that all mean in simple terms? It means that it's very very easy for you to be able to set up a blog and, and do it effectively. So then when we think about the next pillar, social networks and networking, why, what social networks should you start thinking about participating in and why? 
Well, Twitter is a great one that uh, allows you to, you know, start discovering what people are talking about, discovering who is out there um, that's producing content that's related to your, um, to, to your subject. Of, of interest. Great way of searching for leads, looking for people who are talking about your product or service. You'd be amazed the number of people who use Twitter and say and ask the Twitterverse, which is the term for everybody out there in Twitter, you know, who has used a particular product or who knows somebody that, you know, has um, has a particular product or whatever the case may be. Great tool to use for customer service. You can use a hashtag you can create a hashtag. Let's say your partner organization was Simple Solutions. Um, you can create a hashtag, and I'll explain what that is in a second again, um, called hash simple solution service. And then you can tell your customers if you ever want to you know, log a support call, you can do it via Twitter just by using that hashtag. So great things you can do with Twitter um, that really extend the power of these social networks uh, that then also help people find you. So Facebook, you know, again, like I said, the example of creating a page for your business, creating fan pages where you can, again, start to build your online community and not only have people who currently do business with you, but also have prospective customers who are interested in doing business with you coming on uh, and hearing about what it is you have to offer and hearing from some of your other customers. LinkedIn, fantastic tool. Get onto LinkedIn create uh, a LinkedIn profile for your company. Get all of your people to create individual LinkedIn profiles, all of your consultants with their experience and so on. And next, next time you do a proposal, incorporate the link to your LinkedIn page so in your, when people want to see your consultants' profiles, the consultants who are going to work on their project, they can go out and find that information on LinkedIn. Why is that helpful? Well, A, they can find it quickly and easily, and B, it shows you've got nothing to hide. Not that anybody would be wanting to hide something, but in the mind of your customers, they'll say, well, look, here's all this information about these guys. Obviously, they're the kind of organization that I can trust because it's all out there in the public domain and I can find it. So a couple of great, uh, great ways of using those three different social networks. And they're the main ones that people use. And then, of course, you've got um, YouTube for doing video. So let's talk about Twitter, some basic stuff there. You know, the messages, if you haven't engaged with Twitter yet, the messages you send out through Twitter, 147 characters, are called tweets. Your name that people identify you with is a Twitter handle. So I'm Richard A. Duffy. Um, if people want to subscribe to your tweets, um, they use a technique called following. Um, you can also have people replying to your tweets and that's how you start up a conversation on a particular topic. Retweeting is when you take somebody else's tweet, edit it and repost it or just repost it unedited and that's a great way of if you found information which you think is interesting that allows you to then put that out to your community of interest who's following you. A DM is a direct message. You can privately direct message um, the person who's put that tweet out if you want to. You create a little image for yourself on Twitter, that's called an avatar. And one of the most important things, a hashtag. Hashtags are really, really important. I gave you an example of one right when we started, hash SAPB1. Anytime I post content about Business One, I use that hashtag. So any, I just follow that particular hashtag. So even if people aren't following you as an individual, if you want to make sure that they see what you have to say, um, put a hashtag in your tweet that is related to your topic and then people, they might not necessarily follow you, but they'll be following the hashtag and they'll see you. From there, they might go, ah, this is somebody that I want to follow and then they'll start to follow you directly. So again, why use Twitter? As I said before, customer service, reputation management, promoting events. Um, you know, promoting your products or services, building your network and partner community. So you can use it for one-to-one -one engagement. You can also use it for one-to-many engagement. So there's a whole range of different things you can use Twitter for. Who should you follow? Well, should your strategy be less is more or more is more? It's really up to you. There are some people out there whose main aim in the game is to get as many followers as possible. 
Personally, I just want to have people following me who are interested in the things that I'm interested in, SAP Business One, small business marketing and technology. But you know, there are a whole range of different directories you can use for um, finding people and getting people to follow you. Things like Twello.com, which is kind of like a yellow pages directory for, for people on Twitter. Or again, the, the other one I like to use is search.twitter.com. Um, what do you say? Again, strategy before tactics. Think about it. You um, want to engage in conversations, ask questions, answer questions, retweet other people's content. You know, send replies to people's tweets. You know, engage your community. Use some of the Twitter tools that are available to automatically send out your blog posts and, and, and tweet out content from your blogs with links back into your blogs. Best practices, think objectives, determine who you're going to follow, mix up your tweets, but give feedback and retweet and repurpose other people's content. Use your search and aggregate your content. Use a third-party tool like TweetDeck. That's what hours every Wednesday to update all my social media. You can go into TweetDeck, do all of your updates there, and schedule it so that for the next seven days, TweetDeck will automatically send out the posts for you at the dates and times that you've specified. So you don't have to hang out all day you know, doing, your, um, doing your social media. Okay, so some best practices there. Some basic Facebook things to look at. On Facebook, first thing you want to do is make sure you've got a business page or a business profile. We used to call them fan pages, but as of last week, um, you know, they're now business pages. You can also set up groups on Facebook. You can also use Facebook uh, ads and run advertising campaigns to, to get people to come and participate in your Facebook page to like you, to come and look at what you have to offer. Again, if you're thinking, well, how do I find some examples of this, take a look at, at, at my Facebook page um, and also, uh, participate in the training that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. Here's an example of a business page that I've set up um, focusing on SAP Business One. Again, you know, you personalize it, make it friendly, make it approachable, make it something that um, that is up to date, that people can easily come out and see information and give other people the ability to share their information on there as well. So I grabbed this screenshot uh, probably about two months ago, but um, since then I think right now I've got about um, seven or 800 um, active monthly users on my Facebook page. So you know, you'll find very, very quickly that you will start to build more and more engagement with people through, um, through your business page. So best practices for Facebook, build a business page, promote it with special modules and content like the one I talked about before, um, network blogs, Repurpose your content. Take content from YouTube. There's plugins I've got on my page which automatically take my YouTube content and automatically post it into Facebook. Be consistent, okay? Um, don't mix up too much. Don't mix up your business and your personal. And with the new changes that Facebook just made, it makes it really, really easy to clearly differentiate between what's your personal content and when you're posting as your business. That's one of the big changes that they made. Buy ads to promote your content if you, uh, if you want to. I've even done that myself uh, and I found that you know, just running one advertising campaign which cost me 40 pounds because I was billed in, um, in, in British pounds because of the way they do their billing, um, you know, that gained me an additional, I think it was an additional 30 or 40 um, fans on my page because they were able to find it as a result of those ads. LinkedIn profile page, again, we talked about this earlier. Get, uh, take advantage of all of those different components and build up your LinkedIn page. There are so many different things, even things like you can go in and say what you're reading. You know, Amazon.com have published a, a plugin for LinkedIn. You know, think what you're reading. Take your presentations, for example, post them up on a site called slideshare.net, and then you can get a plugin for LinkedIn that will automatically feed in what you've posted into Slideshare into your LinkedIn profile. Again, 
go and take a look at mine and you'll see examples of everything that I'm talking about. And if you've got any questions about how to do any of this stuff, richard.duffy at sap.com, I'm here to help you. Uh, and also you can um, find me through all these different social media profiles and engage with me through those. Um, make sure you're doing regular status updates. Put badges on all of, your, um, all of your other sites showing people how to find you on different areas. Put links in your email signature to your YouTube channel or your LinkedIn profile or whatever the case may be. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with LinkedIn. Finally, b uh, before we jump into q and I I want to talk about managing the beast. In order to really be effective with social media, you have to have a structure. You have to have an, a system and a process for getting things done. Some of the things that you might want to have to help you manage some dashboard tools, tools to help you amplify and integrate your social media messaging. So the first thing that I would encourage you to do is set up a routine. Determine what is it that I'm going to do and then set up a schedule. What things am I going to do each day? Am I going to allocate some time to do my social media updates? Am I going to check my content weekly? You know, am I going to write a blog post once a week? Ideally, you should be blogging at, at the minimum once a week, if not more times a week if you've got the content um, to do it. You know, what are the things I'm going to do monthly? Maybe I'm going to review my, my, my pages, make sure all my content's up to date. So updating your content on a regular basis is really, really critical. Utilize some um, dashboards. Here's an example of what I use with, um, with iGoogle that pulls all of my information in into a single dashboard. It pulls in all of my information from Google Alerts. It pulls in all of my information from YouTube about who's um, reaching out and contacting me from YouTube, uh, all sorts of different locations. And again, um, with SAP Business One, with version 8.8 .8 in the cockpit, you can even now start using SAP Business One and utilize that to start pulling in all this information into and presented to you inside the SAP Business One user interface if you're an SAP Business One partner. Some great new functionality we've just released in uh, Business Objects, Business Intelligence 4.0 around um, being able to actively capture and engage around the conversations that are going on in social media. So again, take a look at that. And finally, integrate. Now I mentioned before when I was talking about Google Places, uh, a partner organization that I'd work with to help them do all of this, um, again, free of charge because SAP obviously pay me so I don't, uh, I don't consult or anything like that. Um, and that offer is available to anybody who's participating in today's call if you'd like some some advice or some engagement around that, I'm happy to do that. Um, one of the things that we can do is um, put together uh, a complete integrated approach. So what you'll see here, here is their social, here is their core web page. Okay, and you can see across the top here, here is all the links that I was talking about. An RSS feed to subscribe to their blog, a link to their Facebook page, to follow them on Twitter, to jump out to their YouTube channel. So here is their YouTube channel, and again, you've got their consistent branding, logo, colors, links back to their main web page. Same thing here on their Facebook page. Consistent, I can tell very, very easily what I'm looking at. Um, again, there's a link through to their, um, to their, their main website, and here is what, um, what they're using with um, network blogs. I set that up for them. So every time they post a blog here on their web page, it automatically gets posted across with a short update into their Facebook wall. So some great things that you can do there um, with, uh, with, with these social media tools. So with that, um, I'd like to uh, thank you for joining today's session.